Jesus stepped in. He stepped in on your problem. He stepped in on your sin. He stepped in on the midst of the devil. Fighting you all week long. I'm thankful Jesus showed up. And he showed out for me, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I wish I could sing tonight. Man, I'd sing that myself. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. How many of you love the Lord? I think you believe that tonight. I think you believe it tonight. You can be seated tonight. Can you give a hand clap for this choir? Leading us right into the presence of the Lord. Listen, I know that we get the best every single time we come to church, but man, I don't ever want it to be just normal to me, man. I, I want to experience the presence of the Lord every single time I come. And I am so thankful for Pastor Gary, this choir, this band, and what all they do. Uh, just give them one more hand clap of praise. They deserve it. They deserve it. Well, I heard that Pastor Britt just preached a feast of a sermon this morning. I heard that he preached on the bread of life, and uh, I wish I could have been in here to hear it, but uh, you're just going to have to pardon this turkey tonight, all right? So, a little Thanksgiving joke. Glad that went over about as well as I was hoping it would. Appreciate that. Pardon this turkey. Pardon this turkey. You'll get that later. Well, praise the Lord. The, I can feel the anointing in the room tonight. Aren't you thankful for Pastor Britt? Listen, that man can preach. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how every time he preaches, somehow it just goes up another level? <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, you got to bring it back down for the rest of us on staff here. You, you're making it difficult, but man, he, he can preach, and it just seems to get better and better. And, and honestly, he just spoils us. I mean, let's just be honest. Pastor Britt just spoils us. But I'm thankful that Pastor Britt is just not a top-notch preacher, but he's an awesome pastor, too. You see, you see, there's plenty. I told somebody this week, there's plenty of really great preachers out there that, to be really honest, they're terrible pastors. And there's great pastors. I mean, there's people that love you, that care about you, and to be honest... They just can't preach. They just can't preach. But I'm thankful that the Lord has blessed us with a preacher pastor that's great in both realms, that cares for us and cares enough to tell us the truth even when it hurts and, and cares enough just to sit us down and just tell us how it is. I'm so thankful for him. The, in the, just the next couple of weeks, it'll be two years since he's been here. And hasn't the Lord just done miraculous things since he's been here? The Lord has just been working in marvelous ways, and, and I'm just so excited about what the Lord has in store for us over this next year in 2018 and all the different ministries of the church. I'm thankful that He inspires us, that He challenges us to be better, um, not only as just Christians, but as leaders in our ministries and, and leaders in our homes. And I'm thankful that God has blessed us with Him, and I just can't say it enough. And, um, and, and I want to preach to you tonight, and so if you got your Bibles, you can go ahead and get those out and turn to Exodus chapter number 2. Exodus chapter number 2. I want to preach to you from the thought, the comeback kid tonight. The comeback kid. I, I, I hope that I have a word of encouragement for somebody tonight because I, I really feel deep down in my heart, maybe this is, maybe this is what I've been called to do, but I, I believe that when people come to church and then when they leave church, they ought to leave encouraged. They ought to leave refreshed, renewed, revived, ready to he just head on the devil for that next week and just go at it again, right? I, when I come to church, I want to leave like I felt like somebody just picked me up, right? Somebody lifted me up. And I know the Lord can do that, but, but I, I'm thankful that the Lord uses the Word of God to speak into our hearts. And, uh, and I believe that He's going to do that tonight. I really prayed about um, what to preach to you tonight. I really had a, a couple of different confirmations um, throughout the course of the day today that this is what needs to be spoken. So Exodus chapter number two, three short scriptures right here. Um, but this is a powerful verse, powerful scriptures. And um, it's going to be good. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 1 says, And there went a man out of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. 
you got to understand here that the children of Israel were in a terrible situation, and, and this was the time when all the baby boys of, of Israel were to be put to death, right? And uh, verse number two goes on to say, it says, The woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, when she could no longer hide him, we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. She took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Now, before we get started tonight, how many of you in the room would consider yourself a backseat driver? How many of you would consider your spouse a backseat driver? How about that? Okay, Lauren, you're raising your hand. I'm raising it for you. Okay, the, you know, the people that say, oh, there's a cop up here. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice the lights flashing. Thank you. I'm really glad you told me that, right? Uh, you know, the, the backseat driver that checks your, you know, how fast you're going, all that kind of stuff that speaks up even sometimes when you don't want them to speak up. Well, tonight, I need some, I need some backseat preachers in the room tonight, and I need you to speak up. I need you to help me preach tonight. Can, can you be a backseat preacher for me tonight? Can you, can you give a word of encouragement when I need of a word of encouragement. Can you laugh at my dumb dad puns and all that kind of stuff, even though I'm not a dad yet, right? So, all right. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to today, and I and I want you to look at your neighbor tonight. I want you to go over and look at your neighbor. I know people hate this sort of thing, right? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm that comeback kid. Now look at your other neighbor, all right, all right, this participatory service here, okay, look at your other neighbor, all right, talk to your other personality if you don't got a neighbor, all right, say neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm that comeback kid. Listen, I'm coming back for a new anointing tonight. I'm coming back for something fresh from the Lord. I'm on the brink of turning my life around for Jesus Christ. Some of you might be in the room tonight. You're on the brink of a new job or a new miracle or God moving in your life tonight. You're on the brink of coming back. And if you're willing to take that to heart tonight, can you stretch your hands one more time across this room and ask God to bless us, to touch us one more time? God, we declare the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in this room tonight. We declare that you're going to do something marvelous in this room, Lord. As this season of thankfulness rolls around, Lord, I just want to take a moment and praise you for what you've done. Lord, I'm thankful that you're my redeemer. You're my healer. You're my baptizer. You're, you're the power when I'm weak. You're the strength when I don't have any. And Lord, I thank you tonight. Lord, I pray that you would speak into somebody's life tonight. Lord, I pray that we'd be on the brink of something new at, at VBFA and you would do something that we've never seen before. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In your name we pray. And everybody said, listen, this season that you don't understand, it's only because you're on the brink of coming back. You, you better get ready tonight because the setback that you're facing in your life right now, I believe that God is going to turn that setback into a setup for what he's going to do in the next season of your life. Somebody say amen. Listen, I, I firmly believe in the power of, of words that rhyme, right? And, and I believe tonight that God is going to take your setback and turn it into a comeback. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, he's going to reverse the curse. He's going to release some peace over your life. And I believe that just as they laid this ark by the river's edge, it was by the brink. It was on the bank. It was on the edge of the river. And is there anybody in this room tonight that's ever been in a season of your life that you just didn't understand, right? You're like, what in the world, Lord, is going on? Why in the world am I going through this? Why did my tire, why did I have to run into that deer? Why in the world did my tire go flat this morning? Why did my battery not start on my dumb car? You're, you're in a season that you don't understand. Well, let me tell you something. That in the middle of that struggle, sometimes we feel like we just want to strangle that struggle. And the enemy has fought you, and the enemy has resisted you. And you've come in here tonight, and you've tried, and you tried, but you can't seem to to get any farther. You've done your best, but the doors just aren't opening up on the job. That promotion just doesn't seem to come. That Christmas bonus got taken away and you've applied and you've been faithful and the opportunities just haven't been coming. You keep knocking on the door, but the door isn't opening. 
Well, I'm here tonight to speak to your spirit. I'm here tonight to speak to the potential on the inside of you that you are on the brink. You are on the edge of something great happening in your life. And and I firmly believe, we're going to go into it in just a few minutes, but your destiny that God has placed on the inside of you, he has directly deposited that into your life. When he created you, when he breathed the breath of life into your lungs, he breathed into you a purpose. He breathed into your life a plan. He made you to be a purposeful person. Listen, he deposited within you a destiny, a a, a divine will, an appointment upon your life. He took a divine, supernatural purpose and he placed it deep down inside of your life. And it's time tonight that we discover what exactly that is for us. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 2 says, And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when he saw him, that he was a goodly child. You have to understand the events surrounding the birth of Moses. That's the baby we're talking about tonight. He arrived on the scene with an incredible destiny and and he was born with a mark on his head. He was born with a death sentence upon his life. Pharaoh was a bloodthirsty ruler but God's blessings were over the Israelites even when they were going through some hard times. Aren't you thankful that God's blessings still show up when you're going through a hard time? You see they multiplied even when they were under affliction and God still found a way to bless them in the middle of chaos. Don't believe me? The, the Word of God says in Exodus chapter number 1, it says, But the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew. The more whips they took upon their back, the more bricks they had to move, the more times that those slave drivers were cussing them out and making fun of them, the more they did that, the more they multiplied and they grew. And if the devil had any sense at all, he would leave you alone. Come on, somebody. If he had any sense at all, he'd stop bothering you because the more he bothers you, the more he stresses you out, the more affliction he puts onto your life, the greater you're going to become in the Lord. Somebody say amen. You see, you might be in a mess tonight, but God can bless a mess. He, he, right in the middle of your heartache, right in the middle of your stress, God can bless it. He can make your breakdown a breakthrough. Right in the middle of your meltdown, God can multiply it for your good. Listen, when you feel beat up, when you feel down, depressed, lonely, upset, God can still bless you. He can still come through. And the Word says that He will make a way when there seems to be no way. He'll make those crooked places straight. He'll open the door that no man can shut. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, I hear you out there tonight. Moses was born into chaos, and, and to be very honest, Moses should have never lived. He should have never survived. Moses should have never made it on to do the great miracles that, that he did for the Lord. And some people would uh, say that he shouldn't have made it at all. And, and I believe that some of you are in this room tonight, you shouldn't be here today. Some of you shouldn't have survived. You, you, some people wouldn't have made it. Some people would have quit. They would have waved the white flag of surrender. They would have walked out on it. But you're still here tonight. I said, you're still here. You're still saved. You're still sanctified. You're still living for God. You're still full of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Listen, nature would say that you should just be surviving, but God says, no, you're not just going to survive. I'm going to cause you to thrive. I'm going to bless you fully and abundantly above all that you could ask or think. You ought to praise the Lord tonight that you can give God some praise of where he's brought you through. You should have been in the hospital. You should have been in jail. You should have got fired. You, you should still be working for that, that, that bloodthirsty ruler named Pharaoh. You, you should still be bound on pornography or alcohol. You should be lying in a grave somewhere, but you're not. You're here tonight. You've got breath in your lungs. You can praise the Lord. You can thank him for another day to worship him. Come on, somebody. Listen, if you've got praise in your heart, if you've got a song in your heart, just like that song says, if you only knew what I've been through, if, if I could sit you down over a cup of coffee and tell you all the hell that I went through over the last five years and how God still restored, how he brought my family back together, how he saved my husband, how he saved my son or daughter, let me just tell you how good my God's been. Come on, say, if you don't get happy, I get happy for you. 
If you only knew the sin I was in, or how dark it really got, or how lonely it was, how depressed I really got, but I'm still here. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still here. When she saw that he was a goodly child, that word goodly means valuable in estimation. This is oh so good. This is so good. Valuable in estimation. She looked at him. That woman that day that looked down at that little baby lying on the brink of the water, she looked at him and his destiny spoke for him. I want you to picture it today. This is that little baby, right? Don't you love babies? Everybody loves babies, right? You should like babies. There's nothing wrong. They can't, they've done nothing to you, right? Here's this little baby, right? It can't talk. It can't speak for itself. All it's saying is goo goo and gaga, and it's doing all the cute little baby things that babies do, right? And it's there, and she looks at him. He can't speak for himself. He can't tell her who he is or who his mom or his dad was. She, he couldn't tell her what he was going to do in the future. But she looked at him and saw something in him that he could not even see within himself. Come on, somebody. She looked at him and she said, there's just something about you. I, I just see greatness on the inside of you. My estimation, my value of you is worth something more, that something great is coming. She said, I don't know why, but I can't kill you. She saw something in him that he couldn't see within himself. And I want to praise the Lord today for the people that saw something on the inside of me that I couldn't see on the inside of myself. Let me tell you something. All I could see about myself was a, was a stuttering kid that didn't like to get up in front of people and talk, but somebody saw something on the inside of me and said, why don't you get up and teach Sunday school? Or why don't you get up and pray over the offering woman? I'm thankful for the people that saw something that I couldn't see within myself. Let me tell you something. The world will look at you and they'll tell you something about yourself. But I'm thankful for the godly people, the people that saw a purpose, the people that saw my potential, the people that like a great granny that prayed a hole through the floor of heaven for your soul. She saw something on the inside of that boy. She said, in essence, there's just something about you. You look like God's got a plan for your life, like God's going to use you for great things. There's just something about you. Hit your neighbor tonight and say, there's just something about you. There's just something about you. Listen to me tonight. You've made it through a lot, but there's just something about you. You might not have it all together just yet, but there's something about you. You might be a hot mess right now. You might not be able to handle it right now on your own, but there's just something about you. You have a purpose in the Lord. And there's someone here tonight, there's someone here tonight that can be used by the Lord to reach someone. Every single person in a pew tonight, you have, you have a plan from God to be able to speak life into somebody else's. To speak the gospel, the good news. There's a difference that you can make. You're not too insignificant. You're not too dumb. You're not too poor. You're not too ugly. That God can't use you. She said, there's just something about you. She recognized the divinely deposited destiny that God had placed in his life. And, and tonight, let me tell you something. Number one, your destiny has been divinely deposited. Your destiny has been divinely deposited. He, he had to survive. He, he had to go through peril. He had to go through struggles. He had to go through pain. But he had to survive. And, and your purpose is always going to be greater than the peril that you face. It doesn't matter how difficult it may be. It doesn't matter what the bill collector might say. It doesn't matter what the boss is going to call you in and say on a Monday morning. But let me tell you something. Your purpose that God's placed on the inside of you is greater than the peril that you're going through right now right now. Regardless of what you're going through, you have survived. You're still here today. The enemy tried to lock you in depression. The enemy tried to lock you in self-doubt and struggle and alcoholism and pornography, but your purpose was always greater than the peril that you're facing. And listen to me, this is a tough reality to face tonight, but anytime that there's great destiny Anytime there's great purpose in your life, you've got to expect great attacks. 
As soon as the devil sees you tagging in and plugging into God and into the church and into more of the purpose that he's pl- that God's placed on the inside of you, you can expect great attacks. Yes. Isn't it so true? Haven't you just noticed that after some of the most wonderful altar services, most glorious Sundays, Mondays just always wind up being the worst? Like, what in the world? Come on, right? They always wind up being the worst, and that's because the devil wants to steal your blessing. He wants to steal your purpose. He wants to steal what God has placed on the inside of you. And any time there's great destiny in your life, you can expect great attacks. And even as a baby, he was no threat to anybody. But it wasn't because of who he was, and it wasn't because of where he was, but it was because who he was going to become and where he was going to be going that the devil started working on his life. Let me tell you something. You might be a nobody right now. You might not be anybody right now, but if the devil knows that you're going to get plugged in, if the devil sees that there's a chance you're going to change your life and turn your life around and you're going to get a hold of the Holy Spirit and you're going to tag into your potential, then he knows the damage that you can do to his kingdom. He knows the damage you can do to his kingdom. And so he's going to up the level of attack. He's going to up his ante. And that, uh, that the level of attack that you uh, endure in one season is indicative of the level of breakthrough that you're going to receive in the next season. Y'all didn't get that. That was too good. The level of attack that I endure in one season is indicative of the level of breakthrough I'm going to have in my next season of life. If I'm going through a lot of pressure right now, if I'm going through hell on earth right now, then I just ought to start praising the Lord right now because the breakthrough is going to be greater than I've ever seen before. Come on. If you're going through hell on earth right now, you ought to start praising the Lord because that means he must be doing something wonderful in your life. You just better get ready. <laughs> Listen, anybody that's been through some intense attacks know this to be true. It's kind of, it's kind of like being a piece of coal, right? It's kind of like being a piece of coal. You know, coal, when it's put under immense pressure, when it's put under pressure, that coal turns into something of value, right? You know what it turns into, right? A diamond, right? A diamond comes from coal. Coal that's so insignificant, right? That that really has no value compared to that of a diamond. But that coal has to go through a process. It's got to go through some pressure. But when it comes out on the other side of that pressure, when it comes to the next season of its life, then it receives so much more value. (laughs) And if you're going through some intense pressure right now, you just better get ready because you're a diamond in the eyes of God. You've got value. You've got worth in the eyes of the Lord. You ought to thank the Lord for the pressure because it just means you must be awfully valuable in his sight. And and, and we ought to borrow some praise from our future. We ought to borrow some praise from what God's going to do in the future because of what we're going through right now. Because if I'm going through this this toughest stuff right now. If I'm going through this hardship or this difficulty right now, then God must be wanting to do something awfully incredible. Listen, when you get under attack, you can't afford to trip out. You can't afford to trip up. You can't afford to get upset or bitter. No matter how the enemy comes against you, every time he does, it's an assault against the destiny, the plan that God has placed in your life. Anytime he attacks, it's to mess up the plan that God has, how he can use you to save somebody at your workplace, how he can use you to to influence those that are around you on a day-to-day basis. Satan knows there's something great on the inside of you. Just ask Daniel in the lion's den, right? Satan knows there's something great on the inside of you. Just ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Ask Joseph 
before he was appointed to be king. Ask Paul on the Isle of Patmos. You see, when Satan looks at your life, he sees not only who you are, but, but who you can become. And he gets scared of that. So he starts labeling you of who you are and who you've been. See, you see, Satan looked at Caleb in the Bible and he called him a con man. But I'm so thankful that God looked down on Caleb that day and he said, no, he's not going to be a con man. He's going to be Caleb the courageous. I'm going to lift him up and do mighty things. He, he looked at Levi. The devil looked at Levi and said, he's nothing but a liar. But Jesus looked down on him and said, he's going to be Levi the leader. I'm going to use him to lead people for my kingdom and my glory. He, he looked at Jacob and said, you're nothing but a snake. You're Jake the snake. But Jesus looked down at him and said, you're going to be Jake the great. You're going to do some mighty things for the kingdom of God. And God sees the destiny and his plan is greater than that of what the enemy is doing in your life. And there's something in you that God wants to use. And the devil sees this. Even when you can't see it, the devil sees it. Hebrews 11.23 says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. He was no ordinary child. And let me tell you something. No son or daughter of God is just an ordinary child. There is something extraordinary about you. There is something extraordinary about what God is going to use you for, for his kingdom. God wants all of us in our own way to do something extraordinary for Jesus Christ. And when you have an extraordinary destiny, you can expect extraordinary attack. But we can't focus on the attack. Rather, we need to expect extraordinary deliverance. Isn't it that great? So often we look at the negative, we look at the hardship, we look, we focus on the pain, the difficulty of what we're going through. But if we're all children of God, if we're truly sons and daughters of God, then we ought to expect God to come through in big ways. Extraordinary deliverance. We often focus on the attack, but we ought to look forward to the deliverance. We've got to expect the extraordinary. Psalms 116, 8 says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. He delivered my soul from death. Anybody ever been saved? Come on, somebody. Mine eyes, mine eyes from tears. Anybody shed a few tears before? My feet from falling. I, I don't know if you've ever fallen, but I'm thankful the Savior was there to pick me back up, right? That word deliver, it means to pull out. It means to rescue. It means to set free. And some of us need to declare in this room tonight, what should have killed me didn't. And I've had some rough days, but I'm still here. I'm, I'm not going to say I haven't cried a bit. I'm not going to say that I haven't shed a few tears, but I'm still here tonight. I might have stumbled and I might have failed, but I'm still here. I might have tripped up, but I'm still here. Look at somebody next to you and I'd say, I'm still here. Secondly, tonight, God will use what we see as a senseless season to expose his plan for our lives. God will use what we see as a senseless season. This doesn't make sense while I'm going through this. To expose his plan for our lives. Exodus 2, 3 says, when she could no longer hide him. I, lo I love this portion of scripture when she could no longer hide him you see there came a point when she couldn't hide him any longer and we all go through seasons in our lives where we feel hidden you ever feel like there was more in you but it was hidden away you ever felt like there was potential to do something great for the kingdom of God but you just couldn't access it at that point you feel like your cars in park or in neutral when it should be in drive you you feel like you should be making more progress and and that's what Moses was was doing that day he was hidden away and a deliverer was hidden away and and you might have to endure a season of your life to be hidden away but when God says it's time when God says it's time then the devil better watch out because you'll be hidden no longer why couldn't she hide him any longer well because he was growing and all, all of you ladies in the room that's ever been pregnant before, there's, there's been a time that you couldn't tell that you were pregnant, right? A time that you hid it from your family or you wanted to wait till you found out to tell everybody, right? But there came a moment in that pregnancy that you could no longer hide it, right? Whether you wanted to or not. 
There came a time when that baby grew so much that people saw what was hidden come to light. And the processes, the pain that we feel in our life are just seasons of growing pains. You feel hidden, but you're growing in this season in your life. And, and so often we overreact to the pain. We, we want to blame God. We want to blame other people for the pain that we're going through. And Moses had to endure this pain. He, he had the loss of his family. He had the loss of the palace. He split on the palace and left. He had the pain of desert days and, and these lonely nights every night, but the pain was just preparation for his destiny. All the things that he went through was just leading up to what God had already lined out millions and millions of years before. And some of you tonight, you're in pain. You're in difficulty. You're in hardship. But that pain, listen to me tonight, that pain is just preparation for your destiny. You can't afford to get mad. You can't afford to trip up. You can't afford to get bitter at the people that did you wrong because all they did was get you into the position that you need to be so that God can set you up. Pharaoh thought he was going to destroy Moses. Pharaoh thought he was going to kill Moses in the plan that God had, but all he did was get him in a position to go to the next level. You see, Moses moved into Pharaoh's house. I mean, he wound up feeding the kid that he tried to kill at one time. And I believe that the devil's going to have to use the things that he tried to use to kill you. God's going to use them for your benefit. He's going to use them for your good. He's going to use them for your glory. Everything that the devil tries to torment you with, God will use it for your good. For all things work together for the good of them that love God. It says when she could no longer hide him. That word hide, it literally means like a treasure. It's, it's kind of like a treasure map of, of buried gold on X marks the spot. Anybody ever uh, go on a treasure hunt before when you were a kid, right? I had a birthday party one year at my grandma's house, and it was a treasure hunt. It was awesome, right? Because when you get to the end, you're looking for the clues, but... It's really the X that marks the spot that really makes the difference. It's that moment when you open up the lid and there's the gold on the inside or there's the candy on the inside. It's the goods that are on the inside. And often that treasure is hidden. But, but I believe tonight there's some treasure sitting in this room tonight. You might be hidden right now, but you ought to mark an X on your chest tonight and declare in the name of Jesus that there's some treasure on the inside of you. There's a diamond in the rough. There's something that God's going to use for his glory. This treasure in the life of Moses had to come forth, and, and God is growing you, and God is grooming you. And when the time is right, that treasure will be hidden no longer. He knows the treasure that's buried on the inside of you. Isaiah 45, 2 says this. It says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of iron. This is the part I really like. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. The treasure, all that stuff the enemy built up, all that stuff, all that wealth the enemy has, the Bible says that God's going to bless you with all the things that the enemy's been doing. Isn't that wonderful? All the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name in the God of Israel. Let me tell you something, even in the darkness of your dilemma, there is still a treasure. Even in the problems and the pain and the struggle and the difficulty, the enemy wants you to fear the darkness. He wants you to fear the secret place. That secret place is dark, but don't fear because that darkness is just somewhere that that treasure is hidden. And God is going to bring it to light. God is going to uncover the treasure that's hidden on the inside of you. In the darkness of sickness, there's a treasure of healing. In the dark of attack, there's a, you find the treasure of victory. In the darkness of bondage, you find the treasure of deliverance. In the darkness of financial struggle, you find the treasure of blessing. Come on, somebody. Here's the key. You just got to keep digging. You just got to keep digging. 
You just got to keep praying. You just got to keep believing. And there's going to come a point, there's going to come a place where what's on the inside of you will be hidden no longer. And how many of you believe that that's going to happen for you one day? How many of you believe that the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life? Come on, somebody. Number three, and I'm finished. What seemed like a senseless season brought him to the brink of his miracle. Exodus 2, 3 says, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it by the flags by the river's brink. Listen, you're on the brink of something great from God, and I truly believe it, but here's the deal. you got to believe it within your own self. Do I believe every televangelist or every time that somebody's ever got saved on TV or anything like that? And I think there's probably some shams here and there, right? But you know what? It's not... It's not the power that just works inside that person. It's the faith of the person that's needing that miracle. And if you'll believe in your own heart, and you'll believe in your own life, and have faith enough to see mountains move, then God says, it shall be removed. It shall be removed. What seemed so bad turned out to be so good. And I I look back on my own life and the things that seemed so bad, they turned out so good. God's brought somebody tonight to the brink of a new season. You can't worry about what you've been through. You can't worry about what you, where you've been or what you've done. You've got to worry about the comeback that God's got in store for you. That word brink in the Bible and the Hebrew is the word safa. It means on the bank, on the border, and on the edge. And like the ed- it's just like the edge of a cup. It's on, on the lip of a cup. And, and, and tonight I believe that somebody is on that edge of something great. That, that word brink, it also has a double meaning. Not only does it mean bank and border and edge, but it also means the lip, the language, the speech, and the talk. Like the lip of your mouth. And it's so imperative, we've been talking about this in Sunday school the last three weeks, it's so imperative that the language that you use in the middle of your problems is uplifting to God, and it glorifies Him. Listen, the words that you say, the things that you speak, the things that you allow spoken over you, if you're not careful, will lead you away from what God has in store for you. The words that you say. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. There's something important about speaking the words of God. There's something important about declaring the blessings of God. There's something important about speaking out, crying out the name of a lost loved one that you're praying for. There's power in your tongue. So when you pray, and when you're in the middle of a hard time, you ought to pray the positive things. Listen, Jesus can speak into your life tonight. He can speak into this next season that he has for you. But every single time, every single time that I've been on the edge of something great, It takes an act of faith. It takes me stepping out even when I don't know what it's going to look like. Would you stand to your feet with me tonight? The Word of God says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And in the story of Moses, this mom and this sister, can you just imagine the turmoil that they must have been going through to lay their son little brother there on the edge of the water and just to push him off. Can you imagine that with me tonight? Listen, I don't, I don't know your situation. I don't know what you're going through in your own life. But I know that every time that God's destiny is on the way, that he wants to reveal or use the purpose that he's placed inside your life, it takes a step of faith Peter stepped out of the boat Moses' mom and sister pushed him to the edge 
I don't know what your step of faith looks like tonight. But if you'll do it, if you'll do it, I truly believe that God will do something in your life. Listen, maybe you don't have that job yet, but you ought to just start praying and believing like you already got it. <laughs> that son or daughter might not be saved yet, but you just ought to start believing and just declaring they're going to walk through those doors. You might not have the promotion or the wife or the husband that you want. You just ought to start declaring it in the name of Jesus. God, use me. Listen, God's going to open some doors, and, and I truly believe he's going to make a way when there seems to be no way. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for these people that are in this room that love you. I truly believe love you with their whole hearts. Lord, if there's somebody in this room tonight that doesn't know you, I pray that you, throughout the course of this message tonight, that you've spoken to their life. Lord, if they walked in this room tonight without knowing you, they're in the middle of hardship and trial and difficulty. Lord, I pray that they would take the leap of faith in trusting Jesus as their personal Savior. Lord, we declare that in this room tonight. Yes, we do. But Lord, in this holiday season, I know how difficult it can be. The hardships of life seem to multiply. The afflictions seem to multiply even in this season that we're in. And Lord, I pray that that you would help and that you would multiply and grow these people tonight. That they would step out by faith and follow the man of God. They would follow the word of God. They would follow the plan that you have for their life so that God, ultimately, you can be glorified and so that you could be lifted up. We love you, Lord. Listen, if you're in this room tonight and you're, you're facing one of those difficult times, you feel like you're on the edge of something, but to be honest, it feels like a cliff. <laughs> there's hardships, there's turmoil, there's difficulty. Listen, if you'll just take the step of faith tonight, if you'll just step out, you never know what stronghold could be broken by your very next prayer. You never know what victory could come from the next prayer you pray in faith. And so if you're facing that hardship tonight, Pastor Gary is going to start to sing. I want you to step out from where you are, and we want to pray for you tonight that God will help you. And we, we believe that you're going to be the next comeback kid, that God is going to set you up for glorious things, for, for his glory and for your good. If that's you, you're going through something right now. You need, you just need somebody to pray for you. Would you step out from where you are? If you need a healing, if you need help within your marriage, if you need restoration, you need God to open a door that, that you can't open on your own. You need a promotion. It comes from the Lord. We're going to pray for you tonight. We're going to believe that the Holy Spirit can do something. Take that, take, take that leap of faith tonight. Take that step of faith tonight. Oh, yes. oh God, if it's this bad right now, I can only imagine how good it's going to be. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Overcome the